Okay, so I've been put in a completely different mood than from the last time that we've talked, and it seems that this mood is going to make it a lot more entertaining for you guys. You see, I've come into this sort of the, um, he would call it mania. I've come into this sort of mania in which I have a whole bunch of energy and want to rant about things, so I'm going to rant about things. I'm going to rant about dreams. It was the dreams that I was talking about yesterday, but this time I'm going to be talking about the obsession of a dream and the obsession of an idea. To be obsessed with an idea is to have an unhealthy relationship with it in your mind, to have an overbearing, like, creepy girlfriend and it's not even an, a relationship and you're afraid of it, that sort of thing. You know who I'm talking about. You can go ahead and assume. Assume think. If you're not in our group, don't worry about it. If you're, like, some person in Japan or Australia or something like that, don't worry about it. But overall, the people I know, you know who I'm talking about. Unhealthy obsessions lead to disaster mentally. It leads to horrible things that happen to you in the future and horrible treatment for the rest of your life and it's something that I don't want you to go through really but you're putting yourself through it. I'm scared of you and I shouldn't be. Unhealthy obsession, I have one too. I have a few. It's kind of like having those horrible fetishes. Fetishes are... Fetishes are fun. Plaid. I like plaid. I like plaid a lot. I really like Anyway, um, yeah, obsessions with dreams, fantasies, it's, I'll expand it so I can make a point and do something ethical. Yeah, okay, obsessions with dreams can turn into something, a uh, dependence upon your, uh, something that's not real, uh, creating your own worlds to live in, um, saying in the safety blanket that you had as a child, an imaginary friend, it's insecure and keeps yourself not fit for the real world. When you go out into the real world when you're older, when high school's over and you're over all of your little teen angst issues and going to actual issues like bills and a job and 401k for you white staunch people. And, yeah. But, you need to prepare yourself for it. That means destroying your little worlds. And... I guess I've been known to do that, but we're not going to go there. And... In order to live, you really have to find yourself. And to find yourself could be a dream in its own. And if you dream to find yourself, I think that's a more productive way of finding yourself in reality. It's a better way of seeking how you can be. Religion is always a good idea, but don't be too obsessed in it when you get to where you get to the point of judging other people. Um, having a higher power above you is a dream in its own, but it's a healthy dream. It's something that you should have. It gives you hope, and it gives you a plan. It helps you set out what you want to do with your life, really. And it makes it so you have a future, even if you don't. I'm not religious, but I kind of wish I was still. I guess I'm too much of a scientist. I can still believe in God. I do believe in God. But I think it is just another dream. It's not an unhealthy obsession, though. I want to live in a world for one day in which you can choose what dream you want to live with just to see what it's like. Be able to open portals to other dimensions randomly. Be, ordered to be able to fly to most people's dreams. The ability to fly. and You can tell from people's personalities if you ask them whether they'd want super strength. The ability to read minds. The ability to fly and the ability to turn invisible. Those four things can define a person's characteristics and personalities and the way they would respond in social events very quickly. I think super speed and strength are in the same category. I often wonder what people dream, and so on MySpace today, I asked about 44 people what what's their strangest dream, just to ask. And I actually got a lot of responses, and they were really interesting. I liked them a lot. I didn't get all 44 yet, I'm still cycling through. But I've had people talk to me about dreams about an ethereal banana, like 
a secret agent trying to get an astral banana and using this device to make it real and then when they grab it it's a flower. That was really interesting. Thank you NASA. Uh, dreams of walking through deserts to fight demons and all of a sudden the desert turns into an ocean and you fall in it and then you treat it like it's any other day. And in Australia and almost coming to, like, not in America you have a dream of coming to America and then everything is upside down and you walk on the sky. Yeah. Dreams like this, it, they make me smile. They give me something to look at and it tells me a lot about people. And I think dreams are really important. They're important to a day-to-day. -day. I wish I had more dreams. I wish I was able to remember my dreams. It's the whole circumstance of deja vu with me. You don't remember your dreams, but you remember bits and pieces when they happen in the real life. When you have deja vu, you remember, oh yeah, I dreamed something like this. Things like that. I will now, sort of a conclusion going through it, I'm going to walk you through one of my dreams. It starts out in my house, in my little room here. This is about a year ago. And I walk out the front door, and it's raining really, really hard. It's been raining nowadays, that's why I sort of, I think that's why I came up with this dream. And I walk outside, take three steps onto the concrete, and then realize that the road is no longer a road, but this raging river, and it's kind of a swamp river, and it's strange because it's constant moving swamp with alligators, and I think a giant purple hippo, but we're not going to go there. And so, I'm just kind of walking along, and all of a sudden I get attacked by, like, Indian people. and. They start throwing spears at me, and I'm running, and I get a spear in my ankle, and then I fall down, and then Achilles grabs me, and we ran, and Achilles used his sword and slashed all of them in half, and then got eaten by the purple hippo, but we're not going to go there again. And then, Amazonian, no, never mind, won't go there. Skip, 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 skip. Okay, and then we're on a bridge. And then we're walking along, I think it was me, Hercules, Batman, and Superman, except for he was fused with Aquaman, and had both Superman, had Superman's costume with Aquaman's colors, and Aquaman's blonde hair. And he could talk to fish and do all the Superman powers, but talk to fish also, and had a fish parrot on his shoulder. And so yeah, they're walking along on the bridge, and the bridge collapses, and they all die, and for some reason I can fly. I don't know why Superman died, but I think there's like... I don't know. There was some stupid reason. Superman's gay. I don't like him. Sorry, Caitlin. <laughs> and yeah, and so I fly over the bridge, and then I get to the other side. There's a gigantic golden talisman. But, but we won't go there. And I get the talisman and wake up. Little things like that. If you were to live your life like that, you dream of adventure. It's the dreams of adventure that write books, write stories. And I think it's kind of a thing that America, people in general, people in general, all over the world, not just America, how selfish of me, that we all strive on. Well, I've been talking for eight and a half minutes now, and so I think I'm going to end this now. But over on. Justice will come into a picture on another day. I'm sorry I did not sing today, but my voice is really horrible right now. I cannot sing. So, ta-ta for now. Respond, feedback, or I will not do another video. I need at least 10 comments. Alright, au revoir.